California with uh, Jessica and um, Jessica Yoon from uh, LACMA, she's Senior Associate of Communication and uh, Alexandra Sivak, uh, also Communication Specialist at uh, Getty and uh, you're going to, to uh, give us a journey of your adventure and, and partnership for this uh, amazing uh, collaboration and exhibition. <coughs> Hello, good morning, welcome, good afternoon, actually. Um, and welcome to The Perfect Message, communicating Robert Maplethorpe and The Perfect Medium. Um, I'm Ali Sebak, a Senior Communication Specialist at the J. Paul Getty Trust, and this is Jessica Yoon, a Communications Manager at LACMA. Um, so before we start the presentation, can I just get a quick show of hands? How many people know who Robert Maplethorpe is? And how many people know who Patty Smith is? Okay, great. So we have most people here know who those people are, so I'm going to keep my introduction to their lives and careers uh, somewhat brief. So in 2011, the J. Paul Getty Museum and the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, also known as LACMA, jointly acquired Robert Maplethorpe's Art and Archive. Uh, so this archive uh, was a major acquisition for both institutions. I think it was the second largest photograph acquisition that the Getty had ever made. Um, and that included thousands of additioned and unadditioned prints, 200 drawings, collages, assemblage, Polaroids, and as you can see, much, much more, including underwear draped over a frame, some of the odd stuff that Robert Maplethorpe would create in his early career. Um, so we had a lot of um, archival material and ephemera to sort through in this collection. So who was Robert Maplethorpe? And again, I'll keep this brief. Um, Maplethorpe was a New York-based photographer uh, who worked through the 70s and 80s, um, born in Floral Park, Queens, and spent all of his life in New York. Um, he was known for his uh, provocative black and white photographs that were often of a sexual nature, um, often included um, taboo sex acts, nudity, um, and then later in his career, it also included lots of celebrity photographs, photo spreads in fashion magazines, and uh, floral prints. Um, his 1989 retrospective, The Perfect Moment, was where most people know him from. Um, he actually passed away in 1989, so he didn't really get to see this controversy blossom. Um, but there were several museums who were supposed to show his work in the late 80s who canceled their exhibitions uh, because of pressure, um, because of the explicit images included. In fact, the uh, curator of the Cincinnati Art Center uh, in Ohio was actually put on trial for obscenity um, for showing the images and was later acquitted. Um, so it really sparked the culture wars in the late 80s and uh, early 90s. Um, <coughs> Matt Maplethorpe was also the former lover and lifelong friend of the musician and poet Patti Smith. So you may also know him through her, uh, her book Just Kids that came out a few years ago. So that's just a little bit about his life and work. So after years and years of research, uh, joint research by the curators, both museums decided that, hey, we have all of these photographs, all of this, this archive, we need to put it on view. So we made the decision uh, to have an exhibition, a joint exhibition in March of 2016 that would uh, feature, feature different aspects of Maplethorpe's life and work at both institutions. So the real question for us was, how do we make this happen? How do we bring our institutions together, cohesively message the exhibition, and brand it appropriately so that international, national, and local audiences know that the exhibition is going to be at two separate venues and they'll get a special treat for seeing both shows and not seeing just one or the other. So I'll hand it over to Jess who can talk a little bit about the campaign challenges and the things that we had working to our advantage. Um, so our campaign advantages, um, so when we acquired the acquisition in 2011, our, ex our exhibition curators brilliantly decided to do kind of a teaser exhibition, uh, which was mounted um, a year later in 2012, and we, both, institutions, oops, both institutions had um, a small kind of uh, highlights from the archives. And as we were promoting this exhibition, it really was an opportunity for us to tease this exhibition that we're talking about today. So already there was an anticipation of uh, this exhibition coming to Los Angeles. Secondly, uh, we had what we called the Maplethorpe moment. 
Um, so we had announced our joint exhibition in April 2015, and coincidentally, months after that, there was just a steady drumbeat of Maplethorpe being in the news. And so by the time our exhibition opened, um, there was, it all kind of snowballed into this Maplethorpe extravaganza. For example, one example of the Maplethorpe moment would be um, in August of 2015, it was announced that Patti Smith had booked a TV deal for her, her book, Just Kids, that was to air on Showtime. When press for that came out, um, both of our exhibitions were already were part of that kind of Maplethorpe conversation. A month later, one of Robert Maplethorpe's photographs, Man in Polyester Suit, sold at, au sold at auction for half a million. Again, when press for that came up, both of our exhibitions were mentioned as part of that Maplethorpe conversation. Um, so by the time our show opened, Maplethorpe was definitely having a moment. Um, our challenges. There are definitely a lot of challenges for this exhibition. Um, the hardest part was uh, managing expectations for our exhibition stakeholders, which included the following. Hang in there with me for a second. So we had our exhibition directors, uh, or our institution directors, who were instrumental in bringing the archive to Los Angeles. We had the Robert Maplethorpe Foundation, who made it very clear that they wanted to be a part of our promotional campaign and strategy from the beginning. We had our exhibition curators, our exhibition sponsors, and just to make things slightly, a little bit more complicated, our exhibitions were sponsored by kind of competing auction houses. So LACMA was sponsored by Phillips, and the Gettys was sponsored by Sotheby's. So if you think about brand placement, logo placement, and all of that, that was, we'll get to that later. Um, and also uh, our visitors. Uh, some of the content of Maplethorpe's photographs are still challenging, and we really had to ask ourselves the question of how will this be received um, in the public for this 20th century audience. Um, additionally, just geographically, LACMA and the Getty were about a 30 minute drive from each other. So how are we going to um, get our audiences to both institutions, especially since we are promoting this as one big exhibition. Uh, additionally, the Getty's exhibition was free, while LACMA's was $25. So. So we, despite all of this, we just needed to take a step back and figure out who our target audiences were and who we needed to uh, communicate to and how. So for example, some of our target audiences included um, uh, individuals who are 18 and over, um, folks who are interested in photography, the history, uh, the history of photography as well as uh, photographers and artists, those who are already familiar with Robert Maplethorpe and Patti Smith, the LGBTQI audience, the national international visitors, and also the culturally curious, which is a great term that describes um, individuals who don't necessarily have an art background, but are just really interested in the cultural happenings of the world. What is LGBTQ? Lesbian, gay, bi, transsexual, queer, and I. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, objectives for this campaign, um, you know, of course, uh, we want to drive. We wanted to drive visitors to both exhibition venues, as we already mentioned. Um, we also wanted to create and build awareness of Robert Maplethorpe's life and work. Um, you know, many people who grew up in the '80s were familiar with him, but there was a large millennial audience who maybe, if they hadn't come across Patti Smith or the Just Kids book, didn't know who he was at all. Um, we also wanted to kind of shift the focus of Maplethorpe's legacy away from the controversy in the late 80s and make it more about his work in the broader art historical record um, because his, uh, his photography over the years had gained uh, additional legitimacy in the art community. It was selling, his photographs were selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars and we really felt like it was time to shift the conversation <coughs> forward. Um, we also wanted to acknowledge, as Jess had said, um, other Maplethorpe-related events that were occurring simultaneously that <clears throat> were sometimes related to our exhibition, sometimes not, but were all part of that Maplethorpe moment. Um, and again, positively connect with LGBT communities um, to make sure that we were connecting with those audiences um, uh, at a community level. So a few of the tactics that we used. Um, first of all, we decided from the beginning that the branding of this exhibition was going to be one exhibition to museums, making it very clear that you had to go to part A and part B to get the full experience. Uh, LACMA, just to give you a little bit of context, LACMA's show featured a lot more of Robert Maplethorpe's early work, 
a lot of ephemera, jewelry, collages that people had never seen that had been buried in the archive for decades. So there was a lot of new things to discover, um, whereas uh, the Getty had more of his signature photographs. Um, so we also wanted to stress the importance of Maplethorpe's mid and late career work in the art historical record, as I mentioned before. Um, capitalize on major milestones and opportunities. So his birth date and his death date both occurred while we were promoting the exhibitions and while the exhibition was open. Um, there were several events held and we just wanna make sure that we had all of those dates in place so that we could capitalize with, on them in social media and our marketing campaign. And we just wanted to generate global buzz about the exhibition and its scholarship. Um, he's a well-known name around the world and we just really wanted to create the, the conversation and really um, establish him as a, as a legitimate and important artist from the 20th century. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the media relations initiatives um, that we implemented together for this campaign. Uh, the first thing we did um, was announce the exhibition a year in advance of the exhibition opening. Now this rarely happens at our institutions. Um, we try to work as far in advance as we possibly can, um, but often we don't have a press release ready a year in advance of something opening. Um, but we knew there was a lot of buzz. We knew that people were expecting an announcement of an exhibition, so we decided to do that in April of 2015. So the exhibition was also announced at the opening night reception of the International Gay and Lesbian Tourism Association Annual Conference which was actually being held at the Getty in Los Angeles in April. So that gave an opportunity for um, stakeholders in that community to go back to their cities and create buzz about the exhibition there locally, nationally, and internationally. And the event, the event also included a special gallery slideshow of Maplethorpe's most well-known images and then a few other of his color photographs that really hadn't been seen by the general public for many, many years. So we were able to give that audience kind of an exclusive treat so they could prepare for this exhibition. Um, because Robert was a lifelong New Yorker um, and had many connections to media and galleries and museums throughout New York, uh, we thought it was appropriate to host a press luncheon in New York City, in addition to Los Angeles, to create buzz for the exhibition. So guests were treated to a three-course lunch, wine, and presentations from both museum directors and both exhibition curators. Um, they kind of provided a little bit of history, uh, talked about the acquisition, and gave a little preview of what was to come. And then immediately following the event, Getty and Lachma simultaneously sent their press releases out about the exhibitions. Um, we had talked about doing a joint press release to kind of keep the branding consistent, but we realized there was so much information to be said about over 300 photographs mm -hmm. that we would send two press releases at the same time. So people knew that we were kind of working on the same schedule, that we were united in our branding, but that we just needed to include a little bit of additional information about what each of our exhibitions were going to offer. Um, and it was quite successful. Um, in the end, uh, directly as, as a direct result of that luncheon, Bob Colicello, who was uh, a lifelong friend of Robert's and who was a, a, a longtime contributor to Vanity Fair, wrote a really nice multiple page spread about Robert Maplethorpe, actually mentioned our luncheon <coughs> and the delicious kale salad he had, which is kind of nice. As a publicist, you really don't get those compliments in print, so for him to say something about an actual press luncheon that you planned is kind of cool. So we were happy to see this in the March issue of Vanity Fair magazine. And I'm gonna have Jess talk a little bit about the HBO documentary. So the HBO documentary is actually also part of that Maplethorpe moment. So um, we have, this documentary is the first feature length film about the artist since his death, and it's the most comprehensive film on Maplethorpe ever. Um, and we actually, as part of our communications plan, um, started to have these monthly calls with um, the filmmakers PR, HBO, where this documentary was going to be airing in April. And we were just talking about kind of communications plans and making sure that wherever, uh, you know, the documentary was mentioned, that also the exhibitions would, would also be mentioned. So just kind of building a larger story, a larger narrative that can just continue to um, really build this Maplethorpe um, extravaganza. Um, so the documentary aired at, at Sundance Film Festival in February 2016, um, and our curators uh, got an opportunity to go to this um, festival 
participate in a Q&A, meet with some of the entertainment press that were there. And that was a really important um, opportunity for us to get kind of uh, the art world, art community uh, recognition in sort of the entertainment film media. Um, following that, uh, the documentary premiered in Los Angeles at LACMA a few days before our exhibition opened. Um, and the film uh, is now a, is debuted on April 4th and is also available online. And I highly recommend that all of you guys uh, take a minute to watch it. It's fantastic. Um, here are just a, a, a little combination of um, some of the photographs from the premiere at the museum. There was a lot of leather that evening. Um, <laughs> individuals from you know the art, the entertainment, fashion, uh, friends and family who were close to Robert Mapplethorpe came to this event. You'll see here, this is Robert Sherman, who is one of the, the models in this really iconic Mapplethorpe photograph. Um, so to have him there was a, a really incredible experience. Um, you'll, just to identify a few folks, you've got Marissa Tomei, this is Paul Martineau, who's the curator of the Getty exhibition. This gentleman here is Peter Marino, who uh, is an avid uh, Mapplethorpe collector and also wears leather all the time. Um, we've got George Takei, and then we have Edward Mapplethorpe um, in the middle here, who is um, Robert Mapplethorpe's brother. Okay, so when it came time for our exhibition to open in Los Angeles, we decided to host a joint press preview, which we both really never had done before. Um, and so in anticipation of that, there were a couple of hiccups that we had to overcome. Um, firstly was creating the press preview invitation. So LACMA decided to send out this invitation on behalf of both institutions. And typically when we send out our press preview invitations, we use a, a software program called uh, MailChimp. And we already have set templates in place, um, but unfortunately for this joint invitation, it wasn't able to um, have both of our logo, logos on top. So we had to start from scratch and build a whole new template specifically for this exhibition. Um, there was a lot of back and forth, I think kind of making sure that both of our logos were represented equally. Similarly, when it came to our exhibition sponsors, making sure that they also were getting, that their credits were also uh, the same size and that they were getting equal play for this joint, for this joint show. Um, and of course, once we figured that out, then we blasted it out to our, our joint list. We kind of merged lists and made sure we got kind of the key individuals from the art world, from New York, from just all over to come to our event in Los Angeles and partake in this event. Um, want to talk about the press kits? Sure. Um, so we also had to create a joint press kit for this exhibition. Um, so it ended up being like a full inch thick, I think. Um, but uh, you know, that also included a lot of discussion of logo placement, sponsor placement, um, and, it, and, it, and this will come up again and again, the fact that we were positive collaborators together, that there wasn't a lot of competition between our two institutions as to whose logo was bigger, whose sponsor got more recognition. We both kind of came into this knowing that this was going to be difficult to communicate and that we, the best way to make this effective and to get people in the door was to work together effectively, positively, and not try to compete. So I think our relationship was actually a big part of that. We, we, we kind of developed a very strong partnership throughout the process. Um, so you know, regarding the press preview, we planned it for the same day. So everybody had breakfast in the morning, uh, saw LACMA show, saw some remarks, um, and then had to hop on a tour bus that took them from LACMA to Getty, where they were then fed lunch, had saw additional remarks from Edward Mapplethorpe, Robert's brother, and then got to walk through the show. And if that sounds logistic, like a logistical nightmare, you're absolutely correct. It was, it was, it, we, we kind of planned for every possible scenario, worst case scenarios, and miraculously we had very little trouble, very few hiccups, just because we had plans in place um, in case a tour bus didn't show up or there was a delay, but it all, it all kind of worked out. And in the end, we had record attendance for our press preview, our joint press preview. We had about 85 press. And if you add additional stakeholders, curators, other people who were there, we had well over 100 people who actually boarded a bus and drove half an hour to another venue to see another show, actually participated in the entire day-long event. Um, and as those in media relations know, it's not easy to hold a reporter's attention that long. So we were happy that we were able to do that. And it still amazed me that we stayed on schedule. Like, yes, we stayed on schedule. Because LA got traffic. There's so many factors that could have delayed the program for the event, but we, so 
somehow pulled it off. <laughs> um, and so, uh, this is kind of a, a quick little uh, highlight reel of all the coverage that we received for our exhibition. Um, we received over 200 stories from all of a wide range of media, from um, national coverage on radio via NPR, local, local press, Los Angeles Times, um, Art Press, The Art Newspaper, Lifestyle, we had coverage in LA Confidential, um, and The New York Times. So I mean, it, there really was just this kind of global buzz about this, this joint exhibition happening in Los Angeles. So um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the advertising and communi uh, community relations as well. Um, so again, we used the co-branding of one exhibition, two museums. Sometimes we used one artist, two museums. Um, you can see an advertisement in LA Tourism for LA Tourism and another one that was in the New York Times Spring Arts Preview where again, we have that cohesive messaging. We have cohesive images. The image on the left is was in LACMA show. The image on the right was in the Getty show and we felt that they were similar enough and kind of each expressed the attitude of those particular shows well enough that they, we would use them as the primary uh, marketing images for the, for the campaign as well. And we also had shared banner ads around Los Angeles that included a selection of images from both shows, but again, cohesive branding, um, cohesive marketing. Purple was actually Robert Maplethorpe's favorite color, which is why um, a lot of the marketing you'll see is, is in purple. And it kind of complemented the black and white photography. So um, in terms of uh, bringing kind of the Maplethorpe conversation outside of the museum walls and into the community, um, lack, we, um, lack, so in Los Angeles we have uh, the LA Pride Festival was actually around the time, happened within the run of the exhibition. And so for those who don't know, LA Pride is just kind of the big um, gay pride festivities that happen in our city. Um, and so what LACMA did as kind of a, an incentive for um, folks who were participating in the festival was to create a special one city, one pride LACMA pass. And so folks who brought this pass to the museum received a, a discounted a, admission into the Maple Thorpe show. Um, and over 100 visitors re redeemed this pass, so we do consider this a, a successful endeavor. Uh, additionally, we did have uh, host a public program out in the city of West Hollywood where we had both of our curators in conversation with uh, a collector of Maplethorpe's work, <coughs> as well as an art historian. Um, and Bill William Poundstone, who runs LACMA on Fire, uh, the blog that, that lives currently on Art Info, um, he moderated the conversation. So really, it was this really dynamic um, engagement with um, individuals who all had a, a different stake or a different story to tell about Maplethorpe's legacy. Um, and that event was very well attended. Um, it was standing room only, every seat was filled, people were waiting in line to get into the program. So I think um, in terms of what we did and in, in, in advertising the exhibition out in the community, I think people definitely paid notice and, and wanted to participate in this, uh, in this moment. Patty Smith. Um, so, you know, as Ali mentioned, Patty is a longtime collaborator of, and muse of Robert Maplethorpe. And so the Getty hosted this fantastic uh, concert um, where she sang, a, sang uh, some of her songs, read some um, text from her book, um, and just you know just talked to the audience. It was a very intimate uh, intimate um, program, and it was sold out. Um, and I happen, I happened to go to one of the the shows, and um, I think it was really amazing to see her kind of. Uh, look back at her relationship with Robert. So in the background, um, there was a slideshow playing of, of Robert, uh, some of the images from our exhibition, some personal photos. And after she would sing a song or read an excerpt from her book, she would like kind of turn back and look at Robert and just kind of take in that moment. I think that relationship that they had was so special and unique. And for our audiences to um, kind of witness that and observe that themselves, I think was uh, an incredible opportunity. Um, Uh, so finally, I'll talk a little bit about the web and social media initiatives we had as part of this campaign. <laughs> um, so uh, it made sense for us to have a joint website for this exhibition. Um, we had maplethorpe.la, um, which uh, both websites, uh, lacma.org and, and getty.edu, would take you out to this 
this joint web page that had information about both exhibitions and what you would see at both of them. So again, kind of unifying the exhibition in the minds of visitors and potential, and potential visitors, um, and basically being the central repository for information about Maplethorpe and its archive. And additionally, uh, the Getty and LACMA have two blogs. Uh, the Getty has the iris, and LACMA has unframed. So before the exhibitions opened, Jess and I had a meeting with the editors of both of those and the individuals who ran uh, social media for both of the institutions, um, I, putting together blog content and deciding that we were going to co-publish a lot of that blog content and coordinate our social media efforts to make sure that we were getting the word out um, and that we were communicating effectively. We knew what the other was doing. Um, we each had a, a certain degree of freedom as well. Um, you know, sometimes LACMA would post a promotion for one of their events. Sometimes the Getty would post something separate. But when it came to the big things, like the blog content, like big announcements, we worked together hand in hand on that, and that was incredibly important. So what were the results of this collaboration? So, um like I mentioned before, the show received over 200 um, press stories from local, national, international press. Um, that totaled to a total circulation of 832 million. Um, total digital ad impressions, two, over two million. Total print ad impressions, over two million. And this is the great thing. The combined um, visitor uh, total came out to over 460,000 visitors coming to see um, the LACMA and Getty exhibitions, which is really exciting. Um, and we're also excited to say that this exhibition is, is traveling. Um, it's currently on view at the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts. So I know some of you are going to be staying on for the extension. I hope you'll have a chance to go see that. Um, and then the Gallery of New South Wales in Sydney and the Kunstall Rotterdam in the Netherlands. So we're excited to kind of continue this Maplethorpe conversation globally. So um, you, we think that in the end we were able to really service Robert Maplethorpe's legacy kind of um, turn the page on, on the controversy and really reframe his life and work in a way that was more positive and more a consistent part of the art historical record. Um, in terms of, of key learnings from this, um, I think that, um, as I mentioned before, uh, early you know, timing is key and, and kind of putting in place your team very early on is key. Um, you know, Jess and I, I think at this point, are going on two, two and a half years of collaborating on this project, and the exhibition just closed a few months ago. Um, so I think, you know, kind of having, not making it a competition, knowing that you're both, you know, working together and need to collaborate effectively um, is important. And also, um, you know, what we did at the very beginning was identify those key stakeholders, kind of know everybody who's in on the game and who's going to want what, so that there weren't any surprises at the end. Um, and did you have any other thoughts on some, some key learnings? Um, I mean, I think what she said about timing was, is true in the sense of also getting kind of internal communications going. Um, we had hosted, uh, or the Getty actually hosted uh, a meeting uh, at their institution where they did a design presentation maybe about like a year and a half out. Mm -hmm. um, and so we all, like the LACMA stakeholders and the Getty stakeholders all had an opportunity to talk about kind of the identity of the exhibition. And so. I think um, if we had to do it again, I would definitely do that, maybe even do it like two years out and get more people involved in that conversation so we can make sure that you know, folks who are overseeing the programming side of things are also included that, in that conversation. If we need to get folks from the exhibitions department to come in, I think I would get more people involved and sort of have like a war room situation, like book a big boardroom and just get everybody together and just talk about the plan for the next two years until the exhibition um, opens to the public. Um, so so um, that's kind of the conclusion of the presentation, but what we wanted to do was, was kind of give you guys a challenge if you wanted to discuss it around your tables. Um, just taking a look at the presentation and what we did in the media, marketing, and, and social media realms, um, give us just, just an example or two of something that you would have done differently or something that you would have added to this strategy in order to make it more effective, something that crossed your mind um, during the course of this. And um, then we can, can briefly discuss it. But I'll just give you kind of a minute to, to, to chat about it, because we're always looking for feedback, and I think it's a good way to put together a, a, a more comprehensive strategy, especially if you have 
a similar collaboration in the future. So maybe more than one minute, like. Five, <laughs> yeah, five like minutes. maybe yes. yeah, five minutes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> See if we can. We can. <laughs> so, well,